Okay, so this is going to be a, uh, a little video about how to um, trade for prospects in Out of the Park 21. Um, and so this is kind of, uh, you know, if you've decided you're a team that you're rebuilding, you want to trade veterans, you want to trade um, certain pieces to kind of build for the future, this is how I do it, this is how I'd recommend doing it. I'm just using the Pirates as an example here. You can apply this to any team. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying if you take over the Pirates, you should rebuild. Um, and I'm going to use Josh Bell as an example. I'm not necessarily saying you should trade Josh Bell if you're the Pirates. I'm just saying if you, you know, if you find yourself wanting to rebuild and trade your good players for prospects, this is how I would do it. Um, so we're going to go find Josh Bell. Um, and here he is. And um, we're going to use the Shop a Player tool to start. So Shop Player around... Um, you know, some people will say only use this tool when you're definitely going to trade the player because it's going to piss them off. Um, you know, I'll use it a little bit more liberally than that, but definitely don't just shop around half your team for fun. Don't do that. It's going to um, really irritate a lot of your players if you do that. Um, I think, you know, shop guys, if you have some intention of trading them and you're really curious to see what the best, who the best player is, you could get back. What this is going to do is teams are going to offer up... Um, players that they're willing to trade one for one um, for this player. What you'll see here is you can often get more than just the players that they offer. Um, so to start, I would say search for the best prospect available. Um, that's what we're going to use the shop a player tool for, is to identify the best prospect that we can get to headline a package for Josh Bell, right? Um, so we're here, we're going to select prospects. Um, we're not going to retain salary and we're gonna search all players. You can go by position. Um, we're gonna search all players because our first mission is to find the best player available, right? So here's this, we're gonna shop now. Josh Bell's being shopped, the offers are coming in. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna go through um, all these players and you can use this potential rating as a loose guide. I wouldn't recommend using this rating as um, it's, it's not like in Madden. I know I've said this in other videos I made. It's not like in Madden where, you know, it says 90 and the guy's a 90. This is your scouts rating and your scout can be biased. Um, if you're using scouting on your scout has blind spots, your scout has strengths and weaknesses. Um, and stats matter in this game, you know, your uh, stats matter. So look, look around, you know, of course, you know, maybe you just want to ignore guys that are 35. Maybe, you know, if you don't feel like going through every single guy and like, I'm going to look at every guy 50 and above or something like that, but don't use the potential rating here um, as the be all end all. Um, combine it with the scouts, with the scouting opinion here on all the different aspects, um, what kind of role they see, their ground ball, fly ball tendency, and their stats. You're gonna wanna take all that into account. Um, I'm not gonna get into that too heavy here in this video. You know, that would be a different video about how, you know, individual player evaluation. So let's say we just go through every, you know, every player we're interested on this list, and, you know, my purpose is not to say that this would be the player I would pick, but let's say we've identified Zach um, McKinstry, uh, Dodgers prospect, second baseman, as the best player available. So we're going to try to build a package around him from the Dodgers. My advice would be is find the top several players, you know, the top three or four most interesting players from different teams and fiddle around to find a package in the way I'm about to show you how to build a package with those teams to find it. Don't just circle in on one team and decide that. Um, find the top three or four most interesting top prospects, best player available you want to build around, and then decide which package is the best. Um, but again, for this, I'm just going to say, you know, we've done that. We've decided the Dodgers are our team. We're building that package. So we decided McKinstry is the best player available when you get him. My next piece of advice would be, after when you're trading veterans for prospects get the best player available and then build starting pitching you don't have to do that you can decide hey you know i want no i want to build infield depth um you know i want to build infield depth i want to build center field depth you know that's cool um and understandable but for this you know i normally try to build after the best player available starting pitching depth when i'm rebuilding a team so for i'm going to shop again for prospects but specifically starting pitching prospects to see the best starting pitching prospects the Dodgers are willing to offer, okay? Um, and again, if you want to, after the best player available, build third base, shortstop, whatever, just like that and do that. Um, so we're gonna shop Josh Bell again, and we're gonna say, okay, the Dodgers are willing to offer us these pitchers, right? Um, 
one thing you want to be very aware of when doing this is especially if you're making multiple trades for three four five prospect packages is knowing when these players are going to be eligible for the rule five draft um, i go into a little bit of what the rule five draft is and what that means in my other tutorial about roster rules you can check out um, but just keep an eye so you don't have you know you don't trade for 15 prospects that are all going to be eligible for the rule five draft and you in the same off season you know the next off season and you're not going to have room to protect them all so um, that's difficult. Typically, the computer is most willing to give up guys who are going to be eligible the next year. Um, you know, you're not normally going to get 19-year-old um, prospects, right, who are in rookie ball and were drafted last year. It doesn't happen that often. Um, and I did mean to say this at the beginning, um, but one thing I do, you might find different trade packages, and maybe you can get younger prospects. Um, but I, I put the trade trading settings on um, heavily favors prospects and very hard. The computer will favor prospects and the difficulty will be very hard just because I found that um, it's too easy to uh, just fleece the computer if you don't do that. But if you're just starting with the game, I'd recommend keeping the settings as is and then bump it up. Um, so here we go. So let's check. So we're going to check the rule five status on these guys under contract. This guy's eligible next year, Leo Crawford. Um, and he's one of the least interesting dudes there maybe. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll take a look at him, but he, he's eligible, um, for the rule five draft and he's the worst rated one, Tony Gonsolin, uh, he, he looks somewhat interesting here. Um, and he's also eligible for the rule five. Okay. So we've got Gonsolin, Crawford, Victor Gonzalez here, contract. He's eligible for the rule five draft next year as well. So we don't just, we want to see, Hey, is there anybody here that isn't maybe this 23 year old, he's an A ball contract. Cool, he's ineligible. So he, you won't have to add him to the 40 man after the season. Um, so that's a plus for Andre Jackson, who looks, eh, okay. Um, Mitchell White, this guy's 25, he's gotta be eligible. Yeah, he's gonna be eligible. Okay, um, so now what I would do is, um, you know, write down all these pitchers' names, I'd, I'd have them handy, and I'd go um, back to the uh, player trade um, I'm going to go to the Dodgers, um, and I'm going to pull up Josh Bell here. Um, where you go? Where are you, Josh? There you are. Oh, shoot, this is, <laughs> I did prep this before. Um, so I had that up. That I kind of went through this to see how it play out before. Um, but I'll show you how I go through it instead of just uh, doing this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, you know, McKinstry is the guy, the guy I've identified, right? So he's, he's my favorite guy. So, yep, they agree to it. Now, um, you know, and also you can decide how much you want to listen to your assistant GM. I typically don't listen to them. <laughs> um, now, my second favorite guy out of the pitch, or my favorite pitcher was Gonsolin. I liked him a lot. So I'm going to see, are you willing to add him to the package too? Cool, they are. Um, you know, and again, you're going to go through and you're going to evaluate your players as you wish. This is just kind of a good way to, you know, Find the best player available, then, you know, at the next position you're shopping for, find the guy you find most interesting, then start to think about who's not eligible for the Rule 5 draft. So the guy Jackson is down in A-ball. He's a pitcher. Here he is. Are they willing to throw him in too? Awesome, because he's not eligible for the Rule 5 draft. Um, another thing that I would highly recommend doing um, when trading, when making trade for prospects is um, ask about their closer prospects because, you know, some people might consider this gaming the system a little bit, you know, their relief prospects are not that valuable. I don't consider it ripping the computer off. They're often willing to trade rule five prospects, or I'm sorry, closer relief prospects, especially if they're rule five eligible. Like this guy, DeGoss, I maybe, let's see. Yeah, see, they're not willing to throw him in. I could do the make this work button now, but see, he's not rule five eligible yet. They're not willing to do it. Um, let's see. This guy's got so Kosowski, um, so his control looks like a bit of a disaster according to my scout. OSA thinks his potential is a little higher. If he can bump this up just a little bit, just not be a total disaster with control, he could be an awesome relief pitcher. I'd be interested in him if I'm rebuilding, even though he's 25, even though you're going to have to add him to the Rule 5 as, uh, or the 40-man uh, after this year if you don't already do it this year. I would be interested in this guy. You know, you'd have him under team control for six years. Um, and he doesn't, in real life, he hasn't walked a ton of people. We'll see how that plays out in the game. But I would be interested in adding this guy, um, Kosowski. Um, let's see, this guy's Rule 5 algebra. Are they willing to... So, you know, you might be let's see, would they be willing to add Spitzbarth? Yes, 
Um, or we could go back and say, no, nah, we want this. We want, let's see if they'll throw in another one of those starting pitching prospects. Um, Gonzalez was another guy who popped up. Are they willing to do that? Ooh, not willing to do that one. Okay. Um, White was another guy. Here. Needs to think about that one, eh? Okay. And then in double A, there was Crawford was another, oops, wrong thing. Crawford was another pitcher that they were willing to trade. Let's see if they want to put him in. Okay, they are willing to put in Leo Crawford, who looks meh. Might want to go back and shop around for one of those closer prospects instead. But, you know, here I'm getting a really good second base prospect. Um, you know, a potentially awesome bullpen prospect and three starting pitching prospects. Um, all of which look okay. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily advocating advocating for making this trade. Um, I, I, would, I would have to, you know, dig into the Pirates more and figure out more of my plan before I'd say, yes, I'd take this trade. But this is kind of how you build a package. Shop for the best player available, then shop for the position you want to stock up on or positions, and then go into the trade summary screen and just start messing around, putting these players in, um, and do it with multiple teams who have the top pro a top prospect they're willing to trade, and you will find the best package. Um, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to dig through these. Um, and if you want, if you want, like to you know reality check your scout and kind of the package you're looking at, you go to the prospect pi pipeline, which is um, this is, and I like to look at the official BNN ranking, which is Baseball News Network. So this is basically out of the parks version of the. MLB pipeline, MLB.com. Whenever a guy gets traded, you see, you know, they got, you know, the Pirates acquired the Dodgers number six, number 10, and number 23 prospect. Normally, those rankings that people quoting are from MLB pipeline, MLB.com rankings. Of course, there are other great sites who do prospect rankings like Baseball Prospectus, Fangrass, all that. But, you know, if you're watching MLB Network, they're using those pipeline rankings. So this is like the pipeline. So what I would to do is I would to go see, all right, let's look at the Dodgers prospects. Who are they willing to give up? Um, okay, McKinstry's, you know, no top 100 prospects, which if you're trading Josh Bell, maybe you should want a top 100 prospect. I don't know. Um, teams are a lot stingier with prospects these days than they used to be. But Bell is under team control. Um, actually, that's, that's an, you know, another thing that's relevant is how long is he under team control for, which I went to the wrong screen. Um, and you want to look, Josh Bell, Josh Bell. So he's still got two more years, right, of team control. So three seasons of team control, which is a decent amount of time. It's not like you're trading a guy at the deadline who's a free agent. Um, so they're willing to trade their eighth best prospect, their 10th best pros prospect. Um, and then all the way down here, it, then it, it falls off. So Jackson is their 46th. Um, White, I'm not sure where he is. Is he higher up? No, I don't think so. No, okay. Um, so, you know, two top 10 prospects and then some flyers, right? Um, Kozowski, I think, could turn out to be decent. Um, if he could get that, if he could just be, you know, uh, well below average control, if he could get it to a well above average rating rather than totally inadequate, he'd be a really good reliever. Um so if you see here, um, the top 500 in parentheses, that's their ranking overall. Um, so here's the organizational ranking, and here's the overall ranking. Um, McKinstry is 151. Gonsolin is 234. Let's see what that does for our system. Um, so McKinstry would come in at 151. So he would be the seventh best prospect. And then uh, Gonsolin would slide in here as the 10th best prospect. So you'd get two guys who become top 10 prospects for your team. And then three other flyers um, for Josh Bell. And again... You can look around at other teams for other packages. You you might find if you if you dig through all the best players available you want to get, you might be able to find a top one hundred prospect. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure that there's there is a top one hundred prospect on that list. I could just kind of pick the Dodgers as an example. Um, but you're going to want to go through and figure out who you think is the few teams that you want to focus on to try to build a package, and, and you'll probably find a top one hundred guy in there who you could get. But um, you know, two top ten prospects here, and then three three dudes. Um, but Again, the, th the things to kind of keep in mind, find the best player available, then decide what position you want to build around or positions, find the best players available with that, and then pay attention to the rule five status, especially if you're trading multiple um, veterans away for multiple prospect packages, because you might get back five packages, five prospects per package, and if you do three trades, it's 15 guys. Make sure they're not all rule five eligible next year, um, or else uh, you'll risk losing some of them if they're decent. 
Um, so anyways, that's how I trade for prospects and out of the park, just a kind of quick, quick and dirty explanation. You know, there's a lot more detail. And again, you know, I didn't go into how to evaluate those players, um, or how to decide when to rebuild. Those are kind of different topics, but any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comments there. Thanks.